Dr. Jim McDonald, Medical Director of the Rhode Island Department of Health, and I'm joined here today by Dr. Phil Chan. Hello, and thank you all. Infectious disease expert, good to have you, Dr. Chan. Thank you. It's been nice to kind of walk through these little training videos, and I just want to thank those who are actually looking at these videos as well. You know, I think when we all learn about the new disease, we all learn about how it's affecting our lives and what it's doing to us, we just, if we have the facts and we understand what makes sense, we're just gonna make it better for all of us here, and we're all on this pandemic together. So one of the things we wanna talk about today is hands, common services, how to keep everything clean, how to minimize the spread of this disease. And I wanna talk a little about how COVID is transmitted by the hands and surfaces. So, you know, like any germ, germs are small. You can't see them even if you look really close. And I'm a pediatrician when I'm not doing this. So a lot of times I say that to kids is that when you wash your hands, you gotta assume the germ is on you and you gotta wash it off. You can't see it, but assume it's there. And that's one little mind technique that I think works for kids as they move it off. But when germs are not washed off, little viral particles aren't washed off, they stick to other objects. When they stick to other objects and we touch them, then we touch our nose, our mouth, or some other object, those viral particles can enter our nose and enter our body and then it can make us sick a little bit. So it's important to keep this in the back of your mind. This is why hands are so important to be clean. And you know, keeping clean hands prevents the spread of SARS-CoV-2 also prevents the spread of flu and other common viruses and other bacteria. So there's a lot to be gained by keeping your hands clean. So Dr. Chan, hand washing and cleaning and disinfecting services helps reduce the, the risk of transmission. Tell us more about that. Why is that the case? Yeah, I think from a, as an infectious disease doc, I think hand washing is really one of those ways that um, sometimes we don't think about as much. I mean, we've talked a little bit about the masking and the physical distancing, but hand washing and cleaning of surfaces is just as important. I think as you mentioned, it's one of those things where I think we all routinely touch our eyes, touch our mouth, you know, touch a, our food before we eat it. So wash your hands, soap and water uh, is best. And as you mentioned, it will protect you against SARS-CoV-2, uh, but also others. I think one thing we've learned in this pandemic is that this virus can live on surfaces of many different things, whether it be plastic or cardboard um, or other or other objects. So uh, we do encourage uh, washing hands for sure and also wiping down of high touch surfaces, which we'll talk about in a second. You know, it's funny, it, it, as a doctor, one of the things I find most humbling is that, you know, it's hard to take myself so seriously about saving lives when soap and water has saved so many millions of lives. And I just think it's important to keep that in context is that you know, soap and water, you know, a relatively new historical discovery, if you will. Uh, I remember when Lister first talked about using soap and water, people thought he was a little bit off. And, and how many lives have been saved, millions, by just using soap and water? So critical to the spread of disease. But there's actually, there's a, there's a way to do hand washing a right way. There's five steps I just want to walk through about washing your hands. And, and I know it's something we do often, but sometimes if you don't wash your hands correctly, you're not really washing the germs off your hands. And part of why I want to make that distinguish is when you use hand sanitizer, you're actually disinfecting. You're killing any germs that might be on your hands. When you're washing your hands, you're actually getting the bacteria to slip off your hands. It's really a sliding purpose. And that's what soaps do. They just lift everything up and slide it off your hands. So the first thing you want to do is get your hands wet with warm water and, you know, nice and wet. And then you want to lather your, your hands with some soap, you know, rub in the soap and, and do that. And you want to you want to do that for at least 20 seconds. And, you know, sometimes people do that by singing happy birthday to themselves twice, or sometimes you do that by counting to 20. And, and quite frankly, if you're too busy to wash your hands for 20 seconds, let's go ahead and lighten that schedule up a little bit. You're probably a little bit tightly booked with life. You know what I mean? I think it's one of those things where like, I got 20 seconds to save my life. I really do. And so I think that's important. And then after I've lathered, I've washed every 20 seconds, I'm going to rinse off all the soap and it, part of why you're rinsing off the soap is that's actually how you get everything off your hands, is doing a nice thorough rinse. So make sure the water goes over all your hands, clean all the germs away, and then you wanna dry them with a paper towel or a hand towel, whatever you got handy, and that's basically how you clean your hands with soap and water. But Dr. Chan, I don't always have soap and water handy, so tell me about hand sanitizer. When should I use that? Yeah, I will emphasize, as you did, that really washing your hands with soap and water is best. Um, if you don't have access to it, uh, hand sanitizer uh, can be a, a, you know, a second alternative. Hand sanitizers, you want to use sanitizing a uh, solution that has at least 60% alcohol. That's sort of the magic number, 60%. Um, but just to emphasize too, unlike, unlike washing hands, um, it, it's not gonna wash away any dirt and if your hands are visibly soiled, you really wanna use soap and water. And it's also not gonna wash off any chemicals. So if you've been you know, touching anything, like, know, 
pesticides or things like that, it's also not gonna not gonna do that. So it's sort of like a you know a quick way to to quickly um, hand sanitize uh, is by using the, the alcohol based solutions. And you know myself, I actually carry around a bottle like that wherever I go um, as an infectious disease doc. Um, and I use it, you know, if I go into the grocery store, right when I get out, I wash it, I, you know, I sanitize my hands, you know, if I'm at the ATM, if I go into a bank. So anytime you're touching other surfaces that other people have touched, like especially people you don't know, um, that's when I use uh, hand sanitizers. Now, a couple quick points. I'm not sure if I need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You shouldn't drink it. It's not going to get you drunk. It's going to make you really sick. And it's also flammable. So you shouldn't, you know, use it around open fires. And believe it or not, there's been people that uh, have been lit on fire with that. So <laughs> I thought I would share that point too. Yeah, and when you're, when you're selecting a hand sanitizer, really, you know, this is what I happen to just pick up at a local store. You know, really what I look for is, I look at the little drug facts on the side here. And you know, I wanna make sure it's got alcohol in it because that's what hand sanitizer is, is alcohol. And the, the brand I have here just happens to have 65%. So 60% or greater is what I'm looking for. And it's an antiseptic. When I'm using hand sanitizer, I just put it in the palm of my hand, a little generous amount right there, close my cap. And then I just put it right inside of the inside, the outside, and then in between side. And I lather up there, because what I'm really trying to do is work this stuff in for about 20 seconds or more. And kind of my point is what I want to do is try to get the hand sanitizer work. The way hand sanitizer works is by actually covering my hands. So it has to have contact with my hands. So I don't want to touch objects until at least 20 seconds have passed. And so if I've waited at least 20 seconds, that's enough time. And by the way, usually you can kind of feel when it's okay to start touching things because the hand sanitizer feels dry at that point. And so then it feels like your hands are actually clean. Dr. Chan, what are some thoughts about disinfecting your home every day, particularly when someone is sick in your house. What are some thoughts on that? Yeah, so, you know, I know this is gonna be a challenging situation. You know, a lot of houses, a lot of apartments, other living situations, you know, are not set up uh, to really full, fully isolate someone. What we're recommending at this time, certainly if you can, is to have someone sleep in a separate bedroom, uh, to use a separate bathroom space, uh, and also uh, separate eating spaces. And so keeping in mind this concept about hand washing, uh, certainly as you, if you interact with someone sick, you wanna make sure to wash your hands, both you and them, uh, wash your hands frequently. You also wanna wipe down high touch surfaces. So these would be, uh, you know, light switches, doorknobs, handle railings, any countertops, keyboards, you know, anything that you're sort of touching multiple times a day um, and, and, uh, and making sure to use appropriate cleaning solutions as well. Not all cleaning solutions are created equal. Uh, you do want to look at the labels to make sure that they're using the appropriate cleaning solutions and make sure to wipe down. And finally, also with laundering. So certainly for sheets and clothing, you want to make sure to, to wash them appropriately uh, in laundry and whatnot um, and make sure to uh, also keep those clean as well. Dr. Chan, what do we think about packages and objects? Like how long does the SARS-CoV-2 virus live on various surfaces? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, so this is a common question we get. We do know uh, certainly that the virus can live on surfaces, like for example, cardboard boxes for a period uh, of, of over a day. Um, there haven't been, importantly, there haven't been any cases of transmission from one object like a cardboard box to another. I'm gonna admit it makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, you know, if you are uh, a nervous person, you could consider wiping down boxes. What I personally do too is I kind of leave it in my garage for a day just to kind of make sure that the, any virus on it would die. But I think that that's probably, you know, my wife makes fun of me for that. So that may be a little bit of overkill as well. So bottom line is just, you know, just use some general principles of both hand washing and environmental cleaning and you should be fine. You know, as we get to the end of our time today, I think it's important just to summarize a little bit about hand washing. You know, I think one of the key things is if we're not willing to do the simple things during the pandemic, we can't be surprised when something bad happens. We know it's important to wear a mask. We know it's important to be six feet apart. Yet we also know it's important to make sure our hands are well managed. So soap and water as frequently as possible. Hand sanitizer when it's not available. The way I look at it is if I'm going to touch an object, I put hand sanitizer on before I touch the object. Then if I'm, after I've touched the object, I use hand sanitizer again. I go through this stuff quite a bit throughout the day. It's fine. We have plenty available and it does help. I want to thank you for all you're doing in our community. It really is important for us as neighbors to help each other and, and really stop the spread and getting the right information out to everybody it really does help that. I'm Dr. Jim McDonald, Medical Director of the Rhode Island Department of Health. I want to thank Dr. Phil Chan, infectious disease expert who's joined us as well today. Thank you so much.